Massachusetts, where I live with my two cats, Frog and Toad, and my partner, David. Sometimes. He's here sometimes. Mostly on weekends. Um, it is June 16th right now. Um, it is a very overcast day, so there's not too much light right now. I had to open up a bunch of shades to try and let more light in. Um, so it might be a little bit dimmer than my previous episodes. This is my fourth or fifth time trying to record this. I was trying to record yesterday and my camera just was not, wasn't having it at all. Was not having it. Um, I think it overheated and it drained the battery in like 10 minutes or something like that. Not sure what happened. And then today, I just finished recording the first 20 minutes of this episode and realized that my microphone was on mute. So this is the reset. <laughs> but anyways, today I have two finished objects to show, one work in progress and a stack of garments that I have made throughout my life up until about a month ago. So I wanted to show everything that I've completed prior to starting this channel. I thought that would be a really fun thing to share today. And then I also have a finished painting, the triptych that was in progress in my last episode. I did finally finish it, so I'm going to put that at the end of the video. So if you're just here for knitting, you can kind of skip that if you would like. But I am going to show the finished um, three paintings that I did. Um, so I guess we'll just jump right in. I should be very good at this by now. I've rehearsed enough times. <laughs> so the first finished object is this top. And I've called this the Lena top. And I will actually try it on this time. I didn't try it on in my last one, but I think I can show you better the full effect of this top when I put it on. Um, so this is, <laughs> this is a crop top. It is my very first crop top that I have ever owned or worn. Um, so that was really exciting. I finished this, I wanna say late last week and wore it right away like finished it, didn't bother weaving in the ends, threw it in the wash, took it out and wore it the next day. Um, there are so many things that I love about this garment and so many things that I want to change. This eventually I want to turn into a pattern um, and the same goes for the other finished object that I have to show today, but just to talk about this one for a little bit. Um, I cast on uh, the garter strip for the neckband. I knit two triangles down, joined them with three stitches in the center, and knit a nice little lace panel down the front and did some simple two by two ribbing on the bottom. I knit this in two pieces, like the front and the back piece if you don't count the two separate triangles. Um, and there's a very simple stockinette piece in the back. As you can see, it is not very form-fitting like I had intended. So the back is very droopy. Um, so there are a few things that I would change. Namely, um, as you can see, this lace bit was supposed to go straight down the center. And after I washed it, it is now slanting pretty pretty heavily to one side. No idea what that's about. Um, the neckband is too long. As you can see, I tied it up. Um, otherwise, this v-neck would be like way too deep. <laughs> um, I think when I pulled this up, the increases along the sides here near the armpit um, became a little bit too deep. They're kind of cutting into my armpit and I'm not very much a fan of that. So I would, I am going to re-knit this and make all of these modifications and try to fix this pattern. Um, 
and then I'm not sure if I will unravel this and try again. I think I'll probably end up doing that, but I am gonna knit the other one first, just so I have this as a reminder of all of the things that I would change. Um, so the first being the rate of increases on the outside of the triangle near the armpit. Um, the neck band is too long, I would shorten that. I cast on three stitches in the middle, I would change that to one. Um, and then the back piece here, I would make it uh, not as wide. This is already the second back piece that um, I made. So let me take this off now. Um, so the first, excuse me, the first back piece that I made was far too big. I cast on, I think, close to 100 stitches, maybe 116 stitches, and I did two by two ribbing through the entire back piece, and I thought that would look so nice to have ribbing in the back to kind of like make it a little bit more form-fitting. Um, big mistake. I cast on way too many stitches for that. I tried it on after I put all the pieces together, sewed them all together, tried it on, and the back was like, it, it like, it covered my butt instead of my back. So it was scooping so low, it was so heavy, there's so much material. So took that off, unraveled it, and tried again with this back panel that I have now, which is just plain and simple stockinette. Um, and then I matched the ribbing on the bottom. It is still too big after it stretched out. It shrunk quite a bit in the wash, which I was expecting, but then I tried it back on after it was washed and it stretched right back out to original size. So I think when I make this again, everything is going to be smaller um, because it was intended that this would be pretty form fitting. And right now it's not as fitted as I wanted it to be. So that one is made with three strands of 100% cotton. This is the cone that I got it from and it's in the colorway Ginger and unfortunately there isn't any other information about this yarn. I got this yarn from Peter Patch's yarn in Central Falls so if you like knitting from cones he is your guy. He does ship across the country. Um, Central Falls, Rhode Island. I don't know if I said the Rhode Island part. So that is the Lena top. I will be knitting another one and making all of those modifications to kind of perfect it. I don't know if I'll be using the same yarn or if I'm going to try a different combination of the yarns that I have here. So moving on to the second finished object is this. And I'm calling this the Carrie Cardi. Um, it's another cropped piece. I wanted it to just be something that I could throw over my shoulders for days when I'm wearing something sleeveless and I don't want my pits being flashed at the world. So that is what this piece is. I knit this in three strands of this yarn. It's a poly flax and silk mix. And I held that together with one strand of this 100% cotton. And this is like the slightest, I don't think it shows up on camera quite right, but this is the slightest bit pink. It's like the lightest shade of pink that you can possibly get. It's beautiful. I love it so much. So I knit this in that combination of yarns. Um, I had seen somewhere on Instagram, just to talk about the idea behind it, I had seen somewhere on Instagram somebody made a garment where it was like a raglan construction, but it looked like they had only made increases in the body sections um, and started with the full number of sleeve stitches. So that is exactly what I did for this. Um, after doing lace for the first time with the Lena top, I really loved the yarn over look and like all the little holes that it created. So I used yarn over increases for all of these, um, all of the increases here along this diagonal. Um, 
Here, let me stand up and show you the back. So as you can see, there is, um, there are extra yarn over increases in some spots um, because I didn't think I had enough stitches to comfortably join underneath the arms. Um, so I did extra yarn over increases thinking I would make some kind of a detail and I don't actually like how it turned out. So that's one thing that I would modify. Um, and I am gonna show you, I have a work in progress and it is a second Carrie Cardi and it is made with all of the modifications that I'm about to talk about. So the first one being the extra yarn over increases um, in some, some parts, I would just get rid of them completely. Um, the second being, I'm not sure if you noticed in the back, it was very short and that's because I did not put any short rows on this pattern in the back. So one more thing that I would change, I wanted to add short rows. Um, I also would like to add a little bit more length underneath the arm opening. There's only, I think, four rows of stockinette and then six rows of garter. And I did the same thing for the actual sleeves themselves. I only knit out four rows of stockinette and six rows of garter um, and then bound off. And I, I changed that to six rows of stockinette and eight rows of garter to give it a little bit more length. I think that looked a lot nicer. Um, and it felt a little bit more comfortable on me. The other thing is when I knit this, I, I did the basic raglan increases, joined under the arm, knit down, and then I bound off and I think I got two over here. And as soon as I bound off, I immediately picked up the stitches all the way around um, the openings and the neckline, but I did not pick up enough stitches on the front openings. So this is very like, it's trying to pull together. Um, I think I only picked up enough stitches for 10 inches and it should have been more like 14. So that is something that I fixed in the other pattern. And then like I said, all of the edges are eight rows of garter instead of just six. Um, the other thing that I wanted to modify is I found that over time with knitting, I prefer to have garments that have more stitches cast on underneath the armholes instead of just joining and there's only like one or two stitches underneath the arm. I think it gives a little bit more movement in the garment if you have more stitches cast on underneath the arm. And I mean, I'm, I'm moving around all the time. I go out and I throw a javelin in the backyard. I love throwing javelin. Um, I'm always doing something with my arms and I also have double jointed shoulders. So I kind of have like an extra range of motion a little bit. So I need a lot of movement in my garments. And I find that with the extra stitches cast on underneath the armholes, I achieve that. So without further ado, I'm going to show you the second Carrie Cardi that has all of the modifications that I just talked about. And this one, this one is so stinking cute. I am in love with this piece. I have not finished it yet. Um, all of the sleeves are on uh, holding cables, all of them, all two of them. <laughs> So I just need to finish the sleeves and it should be very, very quick. Probably only gonna take me like an hour because like I said, I do six, six rows of stockinette now and then eight rows of garter and bind off. Um, this was very slightly larger in gauge um, and I did three strands of this cotton, 100% cotton yarn held together. So this is the cake that's left. Um, and like I said before, I count out 500 turns on my ball winder to try to get 
uh, two cakes that are roughly the same size and then I wind those together with the cone. And you should have seen this after I wound all three strands together. This cake was the same thickness as this cone. It was the biggest cake I've ever seen in my whole life. Uh, maybe I have an image somewhere. I'll try to put it up somewhere in one of these corners because it was so, so big. Um, an absolute pleasure to work with. I have been knitting on this and normally when you pull off the top, this will twist in some way and you can see it's very, very slightly twisting, but it was never enough twist to where I had to untangle it ever. The whole time I was working on this, it never twisted to the point where it was annoying or actually it never twisted to the point where it was even noticeable. So this is the updated. As you can see, I added plenty of stitches in the front opening. So now that's nice and big. Um, the corners I had to fix because when I picked up all of these stitches, I picked up 54 in each of the front panels, one stitch for the corner and 84 around the neckband. So on either side of the corner stitch, I was increasing every row to try and get the corner. And I realized when I bound it off that the corners were, the corners had so many increases, it just made the, gar the fabric twist out of shape and it looked very bad. So I ended up tearing out the whole edging and redoing the garter. So, but I'm happy that I did because it looks much, much nicer. And I think on this one, I actually am going to add like a nice big button here and then do like a little I-cord loop on this side. And that way I can button it shut if I really want to. Um, I did do the short rows in the back. So let me stand up again. Um, this is all nice and even across the back. I mean, this is still a little bit long, but um, the back is much, much, much longer, which I appreciate. Um, under each of the armholes, I've cast on six stitches instead of the two that I did on the first version. And then again, I did six rows of stockinette and eight rows of garter on the hems. And I'm just, I'm loving it. It's much more simple, it feels like, but I love, I love this. It is definitely something that I'm going to continue knitting a bunch of different colors. Might even be like, I might try to do like one of these for each sleeveless garment that I own. Something that will like match it perfectly or something like that. That sounds a little ambitious. We'll see if I actually get to that point. But yes, yeah, so that's the work in progress. I will probably, I will definitely finish this today. Um, like I said, probably only about an hour's worth of knitting left to go. I started this two days ago. So it's a very quick knit. Um, but like I said, although I don't know if I said this in one of the previous six recordings or this one, um, I knit very continuously. Like I, I knit in pretty much every spare second of my days. So I knit this in two days, but only because I was knitting for like eight to 12 hours one day. A little embarrassing. I don't do much else with my time, I must say. It's pretty much just knitting. Anyways. <laughs> Those are my two finished objects from since the last podcast episode, two finished objects and one work in progress, um, which will be finished shortly. And then I will probably either unravel this and redo it because I am definitely going to unravel this and fix it so that I enjoy wearing it a little bit more. Um, so once I finish that one, I'll probably redo this. And then after that, I will go back to this mess and fix this. So I would like to get into 
all of, oh, let me show my project bag. This is a bag that I got from Fox and Loon Studios, and she is based in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Um, I just love this design. She, she created this um, when the conversation started about um, the abortion conversation. Anyways, I don't want to go into that. So I love this design. I bought it and I use it every day. Take that bag with me everywhere I go. It is a project bag, but I also just use it as a bag bag. Even with my project in it, I'll just throw my wallet and keys and go out in it. Um, okay, so I have a stack here of everything that I've finished up until the podcast started. And I think what I'm going to do is actually just get up and try each of them on and I will show you what they look like on me and talk a little bit about them while I do that. So let me get up, get this chair out of the way and we'll get the first one. So this is the first one. I'm going in chronological order of when I finished each of these. So this was my first serious garment. I took this very seriously. I knit this in college um, several years ago now, probably at least five or six years ago. This is a monster. The pattern um, I talked about in, I think my last episode, can't remember which one. Um, the pattern is very simple. It's bottom up. You cast on uh, so many stitches, knit up to the armpits, cast on some more for the sleeves, knit up and bind off. It's all right angles. There is nothing fancy at all. It is stockinette, garter on the top, done. You knit the front, you knit the back, and they are identical pieces. This being my first very serious project, I cast on the recommended number of stitches in the pattern, looked at my needle and said, hmm, that doesn't look big enough. And if you're a knitter, you know that on the cast on row, those stitches never look big enough because when you knit the first row, suddenly they're wide enough. So I think for this pattern, I tripled my cast on number. I can't stop holding my arms out like this. It just looks so... <laughs> this is knit in Karen Simply Soft and every stripe is a full ball of yarn. Yeah, every stripe is a full ball of yarn. Is this seamed on the side? Yeah, it must be. Um, so this took, as you can imagine, a lot of yarn and when I got to the sleeves, I'm pretty sure, even after knitting it like this, pretty sure I looked at it and said, mm, yeah, I should still triple my cast on. And so when I cast on the sleeves, I still tripled it. So I had to learn how to steek. So there's a crocheted edge along here and it's unraveling a little bit here and there. But nonetheless, it has held up and I wore it, I wore it in college. I used it as, you know, like a poncho or I think I used it mostly as a blanket in the commons between classes because I got stuck a couple of times in college where I would have like a three hour break between classes. And I would do like some of my classes were in the early morning at like eight o'clock. And then I would have another lab or something that went from like five to 11 PM at night. So I would have to sit in the commons for quite a while <laughs> during the day. So I had this with me all winter long and it was fantastic. And I would sit there underneath this knitting something else or doing my homework or watching a movie or something. So I still love this. Um, I had originally intended to rip this all out and reuse the yarn, but uh, during one of my previous six recordings, I decided I actually would like to keep it. So that is garment number one. Uh, 
this is garment number two. This is the Valentina. And I can't remember who it's by, but I'll put it on the screen somewhere. This is, as you can see, all over cables. And I knit it in a weight of yarn that was too big for the pattern. So it's very stiff. It has no drape at all. It fits very nicely though. Like this might be the best fitting garment that I own as far as knits go. Um, I think the rest of them are all pretty oversized for me. I think when I knit, I'm afraid to make something too small, so I always overestimate my number of stitches that I'll need, and in the end it's always oversized. So I don't have anything that fits like this. This is nice. Um, but I have never worn it, apart from like now because it's very stiff and I much, much prefer a fabric that has a lot of drape. I am a huge fan of drape. So, and then as you can see with my uh, design choice in colors, I originally wanted to do all of the cables in the light color and all of the pearl stitches in the dark color. And this being my second very serious garment I realized that I was not cut out for that, so I didn't do that. So the back is dark and the front is light, and I think, yeah, I decided to do the collar in the light color too. So that's this one. Um, this is going to get unraveled, and I'm going to reuse this yarn for some other project where it actually matches the gauge. But I'll probably actually re-knit this pattern. I think it is a free pattern. So maybe if I find a yarn that actually fits the gauge, I would redo this. Probably in wool too, so I could like wear it as like a nice cozy warm sweater in the winter. So anyways, that is this one. On to the next. This one is my first self-drafted <laughs> drop down, drop shoulder sweater. And I made this for David. This is in the Karen Latte Cakes yarn. And I actually very much would like to knit something in this yarn again for myself. Nothing nearly this oversized, um, even though this is super cozy and just very, very, very soft because of all of this furry texture on it. I love it. So this was his color choice. He went to Michael's with me and spent far too much time with me in the yarn section after I got carried away looking at other yarns, even after he had picked out his. So uh, very simple construction, very basic drop shoulder. I think I did like just two big rectangles front and back and then same thing with the sleeves. I can't remember. Oh no, I knit the sleeves in the round. So I must have picked up stitches around the opening, knit the sleeves in the round because I can't feel a seam. Um, I did some decreases. It's probably very hard to see because of the yarn, but there's a little strip there. I did decreases every couple of rows on the sleeves. Yeah. I haven't seen him wear it too much, but I think it's because he forgot it at his family home one time over the winter. So, but he does really like this sweater. So that makes me very happy. This is the first sweater that I ever knit for him. Uh, the first anything I ever knit for him, I think. Um, and I had never heard of the is it the sweater curse or the boyfriend sweater curse or something like that? I can't remember. They say like if you, while you're knitting the garment, you'll realize that you shouldn't be in the relationship or something, or after you finish it and give it to them, they don't have as much appreciation as you would expect from a handmade item or something like that. And then you break up or whatever the curse is, had no idea it existed and we're still together. Don't believe in the boyfriend curse.
So the next one, uh, super chunky, another very basic drop shoulder. This one was for me and I got slightly more fancy with it because I did a V-neck instead of just like a regular straight across neck. So, and I did the same thing. I did some decreasing on the arms to get it to this shape. This is my first time doing multiple colors in the same garment, right? Other than, other than like a, I had a full piece. This was like my first time where I had to like join a second color in the same piece that I was working on. Does that make sense? So I, <laughs> anyways, this was momentous for me using two colors um, because I am afraid of color work. So I did all of these. This is in, I want to say this was the Michaels brand. I think it's Loops and Thread and it was Eco Cozy in, I think it was like sage green and then there was flecked navy color. I think, I don't know if the yarn still exists, not positive. That's this one. <laughs> this one I have to show you as a set. This was knit in a chateau by Nicole by Stitch Studio, I think. I found it at Michael's probably 10 years ago. And this is like that Bernat chunky velvet yarn it's very similar um, and it's meant for blankets so i of course took my ginormous stash of it and made as many pieces as i could possibly make i made this this past winter um pretty much right after i moved in here i started working on this and this was i still have yarn left over even after <laughs> this is i have little cuffs here. I meant for these to be like joggers. These are separate pants. And this was my first time doing short rows. I did short rows in the back because I knit it down the first time to the leg separation and realized that the back was not coming even close to the right length. So I ripped it all back, did short rows. Not sure if I did the short rows correctly because I had never looked up a video. I just kind of knit to a point, turned it, and then just kept knitting back the other way. And I was like, yeah, that's that's pretty much short rows. <laughs> so I did this one. I did a folded over collar. Um, and I did, I sewed down the back um, so that it stays kind of folded over and then left the front a little open. Boy, I am lucky that it's only 73 degrees in here, otherwise I'd be dying. So I added little tiny pockets, you can hardly see because they blend in, um, and these hold absolutely nothing because, I'll show you, um, if I put my phone in here, it, uh, it sticks out and then I bend over and it falls right on my toes usually. So I don't put anything in these pockets. However, I did put pockets down here and this fits very nicely in those. So I have worn this whole suit out to go grocery shopping throughout the winter. I was very proud of it. I still am very proud of it and it's extremely warm. So I'm gonna, excuse me, move on to the next one. This is my first crochet garment. So I know it's not knitting, but I used, I want to say every scrap of yarn I could possibly find. Didn't matter the fiber content, 
didn't matter how much I had left, I was gonna use it. So I knit this in every possible combination of leftover yarns that I had in my stash at the time. You can see my lovely little tassels in the side. Um, this was completely randomly knit together, or sorry, crocheted together, meaning I think I think I started with the ribbing at the bottom. Maybe? No, I definitely didn't. Um, I started with, yes I did. Okay, so I did a ribbing strip around the bottom. And then I think I started here. And then I just did like this one. And then I did this one. And then I did this one. And then this one. And just moved on in patches. Um, there are some design choices that I made, which were this side. Um, this yarn was much bigger in gauge than the rest of these sections, um, because some of these are where I had to combine a bunch of different yarns to get like a nice chunky gauge. So I know that a bunch of these sections are Lion brand, um, the Woolies Thick and Quick. And this was all leftovers from, I have a pattern for chunky slipper socks. It's a free pattern on my website. Um, and these are all the leftover yarns from when I made those. So I use those everywhere. And I just kind of match the rest of these yarns to that gauge. So like this is some leftover of the Eco Cozy from that sage green uh, drop shoulder sweater that I just showed. I also had this gold color for another project that I made my sister. Um, same thing with up here. This blue is also another one. And I combined this with some Red Heart Super Saver, this cream color, because I had, it was like one of those one pound balls. Oh, maybe it was the Karen one pound. Can't remember. This is Bernat Velvet mixed with that Karen Latte Cakes leftover. This has like three or four different colors in it. This is that Chateau um, something. This is like a blanket yarn. But anyways, I crocheted this section wrapping around the side and the gauge was too big. So this was like scooping into a point here and it looked bad just gonna say that. So I decided to cut a slit in the side and weave in this, this, <laughs> and that's how it ended up. <laughs> I don't know where my head was at, but I really wanted these little string details everywhere. Um, this is a combination of, again, like four different, I want to say worsted weight yarns to make this with that Karen Latte Cakes, the fuzzy yarn. I used it in a couple places to kind of keep this a little bit more cohesive. There's, it's in here as well. Um, and I'm actually a huge fan of this sleeve. This, I think, was an entire ball that I had left over that I knew I wasn't going to use. And then... A bunch of other different leftovers. This is all the Lion brand woolies thick and quick. Um, and then we've got the blanket yarn again. Four different strands of something. And then up here, right there, um, I could not figure out how to crochet into that area and properly cover my shoulder. So I left it open and put another thing of string across it and yeah. Now it's just a design detail. So um, I, I won't really go into anything on the back only because I can't see it, but you can see all of the leftover yarns that I have used. And I very lovingly call this the shit show sweater. So there it is. I wore it to a Christmas party 
about 20 minutes after I finished it. I don't think I've ever even washed this. Um, everything up until this point has never been blocked. They have been washed though, I will say that. Just throw everything right into the machine, washer and dryer, and hope for the best. But most of this yarn is from Michaels, so it all says on the label that it's machine washable and dryable. I've only recently started getting into yarns that um, might require hand washing, but I still throw them in the washer dryer. Anyways, moving on to more recent projects I will show you. This is my rooster sweater. And this is made in Karen Simply Soft. This is all self-designed. This was my second raglan attempt. The first one was this. This was my very first attempt at a raglan design. And I thought it came out really well and I was really happy with it and I liked the fit. So I did another one. This was after a couple months, I want to say, because during the winter, I usually hit that point where I would just rather play video games than do anything else. So I did that for a few months and then got back to knitting. And by that point, it was a little bit warmer out. So I went with a lighter fabric and I, I don't know what else to say other than I absolutely love it. The rooster design goes all the way around the side. So the tail feathers come out the back. Um, all self-drafted. Um, I did the red I-cord edging on all of the edges, and I think that was a really nice touch. I love the little pop of color that it gives. I'm usually not like a red, white, and blue kind of person, but I thought it worked out really well with the rooster here. So super happy with this. I wear it all the time. Um, I can't remember if this is the piece though that has a lot of static when it comes out of the dryer, but either way, does not stop me from wearing it. One of my favorite pieces. It fits a lot nicer than some of the more oversized pieces that I have made. Um, I love the length. I really wanted something long. Yeah. Um, and I think actually this inspired me. I'm going to try and make more just like this, but like t-shirts and kind of tunic length as well that I can wear throughout the summer. Um, cause again, this is just the Karen Simply Soft, so it's not like extremely warm. I don't think I would overheat in this in the summer. I do struggle with the heat a little bit. Um, but I think this would be really nice. So I do plan on making a bunch more garments that are inspired by this until I have used up my stash of Karen Simply Soft and then I can finally graduate to 100% cottons and wools for I think after after I use up all my stash of acrylics I don't think I'll ever buy them again so I'm hoping to graduate to um, more natural fibers in the future so that's this one So this one, oops, the tag is there. This one and the next piece that I'm about to show you are, I wish I had my headband, are pieces that I designed for, yeah, these sleeves are actually very long, we'll do that. Um, my fairs that I go to. So this, I mean, I designed them knowing that it's something that I would wear and I've kind of designed things that are for myself, but also intended to sell. So this is one of those. Um, and again, because I'm afraid of color work, this is double knit over the top after I finished, instead of doing stranded color work or going back and forth. Um, another raglan design, I did a double folded collar this time, and I think it's super cozy. It's nice and squishy. I did the sleeves extra long because I love long sleeves and you can always 
fold them up and then they are the perfect length right there at the wrist. Well, a little bit past the wrist still, but either way, they're very, very cozy. This yarn is, now I'm gonna have to remember it. It's some kind of satin sheen yarn. It's a 100% it's a acrylic. I'll put it on the screen somewhere once I find the tag. Um, but this is the one now I'm remembering. This is the one when you take it out of the dryer, it's static like I've never experienced in my life. Everything sticks to it. It sticks to itself. I have five or six uh, wool balls in the dryer to help with static. Doesn't do anything. The wool ball sticks to it. It's It doesn't help at all. But I also have no idea if static's bad. It's just kind of annoying for a little bit and then you just kind of like, <laughs> it's so weird. When I pull it out of the dryer, I like wring the static out of it and then like just go touch something and it gives me a really big shock and it hurts and then it's like gone, the static's gone. But if you ever get something that's extremely staticky out of the dryer, I encourage you to wring it out because it feels like you're wringing out water, but it's all static. And it's one of the more interesting tactile experiences I've ever had. Anyways, that is this one. This is the Witchy Sweater version one, and I do plan on making more of them, but now it's in the much warmer months, so these are kind of on hold. I might do like a kind of a crop top version, with the same kind of a decal, um, but we'll see. I'm more focusing on selfish knits right now, um, and then I'll go back to selfish knits that are meant to be sold. <laughs> so I have one more piece to show you, um, which is also meant for fairs. So that'll be the last one. This is one of my absolute favorite pieces that I have made to date. Um, it's the Michaels brand. It's 55% superwash merino wool and 45% anti-pilling acrylic. Um, it, I think it was a limited time yarn at Michaels because I found it in the clearance and I don't know if it's coming back or not. Not sure, but that's what the main color is. This is the color Spice, and then I have all of the details are in the same yarn, but in the color white. I think it was called white. Um, and this is, again, I create for myself, but with the intention to sell. This is one of my favorite things that I've ever made. Because of the wool content, it is extremely warm for this weather. I started sweating almost immediately when I was taking pictures, which I will put somewhere up here so you can see like a better outfit. <laughs> but I did poofy sleeves, um, which I really wanted. I did the eye cord edging in a contrast color, the white, which I think looks really nice. Um, this was meant to kind of like the ribbing around the center was meant to sit right at the waist and then it flares out a little bit more. Um, I increased right after the ribbing to do that. This is a wrap top. So this is two separate triangles that I knit together across the front. The back panel is all just one big rectangle. It has, you know, of course, arm shaping. What was that in the back? Oh, that was the tag. Um, so um, you can see I've kind of started getting into slightly more complex constructions. I wouldn't even really call it complex, really. But um, I've started becoming more adventurous. I feel more adventurous in my knitting lately. And so these are the results, and I'm really loving experimenting with knitting. These details are all crochet. So I crocheted individual leaves and individual flowers. And then I took my crochet hook and I just did like a chain, a random willy nilly chain all the way up 
and then stitched all of these individual pieces down. So there are a lot. These are already woven in. I just think I forgot to snip them after I washed it because this is machine washable because it is, you know, super wash and acrylic. Um, I didn't find that it grew. I don't think at all when I washed it. So that's really nice. I don't know what all of this is. <laughs> Anyways, this is the last piece that I have to show you. Um, So that was all of the pieces that I have made in my wardrobe up until this point. There have been a couple of other things like here or there, things that I couldn't really find, like the, uh, the bulky slipper socks. I made so many of those for my whole family. That was my gift to them one year. I think it might have been two years ago, um, but I couldn't find those. Um, but I'll try to put a picture up here somewhere of all of the slipper socks that I've made. And that's all of the items that I want to show you. I have to go grab the painting now because I do want to show that. All right, I just grabbed the paintings that I want to show you. And these are done as a triptych, so they're meant to be viewed as kind of one piece but on three separate panels but they could also be viewed as individual paintings so this is the first one um i don't whoop, let me get the glare out of there i just kind of like to do willy-nilly brush strokes for flowers and then of course i had to add in some bees here and there. I love putting bees in my paintings. So that is the first one. This is the middle one. Um, I don't really have too much to say about these other than I just really wanted to show them. I did talk about um, how I went about creating these in my last episode, so I'm not going to repeat too much on that. But the basic idea was every brush stroke will have more than one color in it, all unblended. Um, and I did all of these paintings with uh, the same brush and I never cleaned the brush in between brush strokes so everything is just I tried to create as much like fluidity between all the colors as I could um, and I am I'm just extremely happy with how these turned out I'm gonna have to Sorry, I won't speak while that's in front of my face. Um, I'm gonna have to find a way to scan these in so that I at least have the images um, because if they sell at the show, then that's, that's kind of it. But I do have some time to get them scanned into my computer. I have a scanner, they just can't handle images this big. Um, and I did have a subscription to Photoshop to photo merge larger ones but it was becoming a little bit too expensive. It was like $22 a month just to photo merge large paintings occasionally. And that wasn't something that I wanted to continue spending my money on. So I canceled that subscription and so now I don't really have a way to merge large images together, especially at high resolution. I scan them in at 1200 DPI um, just in case I ever wanted to blow them up for really, really large prints. So if you are also an artist or you scan in or even like photography or illustration, something like that, and you scan in large works, um, and you have a program that's 
less expensive than Photoshop to merge them all together into one nice large file. Uh, would love to know what you use for that. So that is everything I have to share today. This video is much longer than I anticipated it would be. I guess I kind of anticipated it would be a long one, but maybe not this long. Anyways, that's everything that I have to share with you today. Thank you so much for sticking around for this long if you're still here. Um, you can find me on Instagram as All We Make Is Good and on Ravelry as, it might also be as All We Make Is Good now. I can't remember if I changed that. Otherwise it'll be under Ellen Joss, uh, which is what it used to be under. Um, so if you like what I'm sharing here, uh, give a like, comment down below on what you're working on right now. I would love to know if you have tips and tricks on some of the things that I've mentioned in this video. Um, please also share those below. I would love to see that and start chatting with you guys about certain things, especially like how to grade patterns. If you have any experience with that, um, I would love to know. Um, so yeah. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me today. I just finished recording 20 minutes of content and it turns out my microphone was on mute. Alrighty, let's try this again. Here we go. This goes back on and reset.